I will always remember the first time I played. There were only a handful of us, but the competition grew. Soon, I felt the urge to be better than my opponent. Learn everything there is to know. Master every technique necessary. Challenge myself in every single day. If someone told me back then that it would grow this large <laughs> and, and watch the best in the world fighting for hundreds of thousands of dollars, I would have never believed it. But here we are now. I can see it. Everyone will. So there you have it, folks. That is our big announcement to wrap up this show. The Summit. Oh, boy, oh, boy. We've got LD and Gods over here. They're man in the helm. They're going to field some questions and also give you guys um, some details specifically about this event. Yeah, we've been working a long time to make this possible. Uh, the idea kind of, I don't know, it stemmed up last year sometime. Yeah, it's like we, I know we had talked about it. Oh, God, it was like before we even decided to run the Indiegogo project. Yeah. We are like... Well, you know, one day I really want to do like a big LAN event, get all the teams together at a house and just do like more of a casual, like intimate yes. type of event. That was our big stretch goal. I mean, we never actually reached it there, but like our ultimate stretch goal was like, if we, if people want to support this, we will try and do that. Obviously, I don't think we'll, I'm kind of glad we didn't reach it because I don't think we we're ready to do it. But now it was a blessing in disguise that we didn't at the <laughs> yeah. time. And now that we've got we still got our work cut out for us, but I'm pretty confident. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for those of you who don't know, it's going to be a six-team land tournament. So we're going to fly in six teams to Los Angeles to our studio, have a fun, more intimate tournament. You get to see a lot more behind-the-scenes stuff with the teams. There's a fifty thousand dollars base prize pool, and also there'll be a Dota TV ticket. So the prize pool we expect to grow uh, well beyond that fifteen thousand dollars mark. Yeah. So it, I, I know there were some questions. It will be crowdfunded, um, and. Yep. One of the things that I kind of the genesis of this idea is like there's a lot of awesome live event operators in the scene, right? You've got DreamHack, now ESL, who's getting more involved. They did EMS last year, MLG in China, you have WPC, G League, and many others. So there's a lot of people who do great live events with a big audience, but one of kind of the drawbacks of those events is you don't really get to interact with the players that much. Like if you're at the event, maybe you get to get their autograph. I know at MLG, like I'd see like Dendi walk through the audience and yeah. he'd just get like accosted by like 50 people. Really nice guy, if he has time, we'll sign an autograph for you. But you don't get to like talk to him or just like kind of see what he's really like. So uh, that's what we're looking forward to most, I think, is just getting the players like more a part of the show, not just as competitors, but also you know, we all want to know what they actually think about the way teams are drafting, playing, what they can do better. And uh, it should be a breath of fresh air, so I'm really excited yeah. for it. We're also not quite capable of running an ESL or MLG level tournament. Yeah. <laughs> like we say this, like oh, we wanted on. to do something different. We didn't want to do what ESL oh. and MLG doing. Translation. Oh, dude, we totally could do. We can't do that. We could sell out the Rose Bowl, no problem. <laughs> you know it. Easy, easy, uh, easy. No, I, I, obviously, like we're not, we're not it's particularly well equipped. Something to do missing it. in the community, though. Yeah, and this is just you know it's something different for the players as well. Like, I mean, we've been talking a lot about the hectic event schedule yeah. and. Uh, I think it is worth mentioning, because I know a lot of people have in the past kind of brought it up and have been discussing it. All the teams that are playing, the players wanted to come. Like, nobody is obligated to compete. The teams are choosing yeah. to play. So, And I think that's something to keep in mind for all the events in general for June is, yeah, it's busy, but... If teams feel it's too much, they don't have to play, and, yeah. and they want to come. So I'm excited. Yeah, as it is, DK Navi uh, confirmed they're going to be coming over to LA in June uh, 5th to 8th, for those of you wondering about the date. And uh, we'll have... Not four qualifier spots, but it's three qualifiers. Yeah, we'll have two spots for North America, as well as one for Europe and one for Asia. So a total of two North American teams, two European teams, and two Asian teams. Cool. Um, as we've been spanning away in the chat, mentioned on Twitter and Facebook, we are going to have a Q&A now. Just run through some of the questions the community may have about the event. We didn't really know what to expect when we announced this, so we figure you guys ask us whatever the hell you want. So... Uh, <laughs> be, be, be gentle. <laughs> yeah. After like the show earlier today, I guess it can't yeah. it can't devolve anymore. I'm gonna join gods and take a seat. Right. We're just what, gonna, what we I'm gonna prepare for these questions. I took a seat because I was actually off the camera, so <laughs> I, was, really? I, I saw one or two comments like, "Gods, man, you need to like lower your chair." I was like, He's too tall. Gods, you need I'm to preparing. Just, like, I'm yeah. preparing for these questions, man. I gotta sit down. <laughs> okay. You need okay. the. You know they have that surgery for like it used to be a thing where like the leg lengthening surgery. Have you heard yeah. about this? Like basically, they yeah, stretch yeah. your legs yeah, yeah. to make you taller. If you, you want to become a basketball crunch. player, crunch. like they need to just take you, put you on a table, and just yeah, because you make it hard when we're setting up the fucking it's cameras. Like reverse it's really annoying. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah, anyway, you had to be next to me for a lot of it. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we've got questions. Yeah, we'll go through a lot of these questions now. As uh, if you want to pop our, onto our production PC here, Mr. Roland. There we go. Where are you? There we go. As uh, it's a fun full screen. There we go. So. Uh, Cloud9, will they be considered American or European team? They're going to be playing in the American qualifier, is the current plan. They've got three, yeah. well, I'm confused. They've got two NA players, but they're going to be playing in the American qualifier. Correct. Okay. Um, nice, nice, nice. Good question. Do we have, a, we need to buy a hot chocolate machine. I mean, <laughs> how hard is it to make hot chocolate? I can make him like some a special hot chocolate. Machine? I can make him some hot chocolate, no problem. That sounds really inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. Don't you just need warm water oh, and some oh, Swiss oh, mess? I'll make ice, ice, yeah. ice some hot chocolate. Yeah. Um, next oh, question. Geez. Is it similar to the first one? How many in We're going to lock you right back in the Harry Potter closet if you keep this <laughs> No, up please, right. not keep again. This up right. Not again. Not again. Next question, similar to the first. How many NA players will be prerequisite to compete in the NA qualifiers? Teams like C9, Occupy, so Greyer. Um, there's no set rule on this at this point. We're still exploring what we want to do. But at this point, I believe Cloud9, as well as teams like Dog, who maybe only have two NA players, will be allowed to play in the NA qualifier. Mm -hmm. It'll be scheduled around the NA team. So it'll be like NA server, NA time. Similar to how Starlighter does it, where they've got Dog playing in the North American qualifier. So, yeah, and, and part of our goal with this event is, I mean, when we started planning it, we had no idea what was going to happen with MLG. But... Uh, we really want to bring just more events to North America. It's where our yeah. studio is located. There's a real lack of them right now. Europe's in fantastic shape. I mean, you've got ESL, Star Ladder, and DreamHack. We're all doing just constantly huge events. Pretty easy for people to attend and just be a, and be a part of. Um, we're not going to have a big on-site live audience, but we'll probably we'll probably have some more news about uh, other ways that you guys can get involved. But yeah, basically, we want to have just more events in North America, and this is our move to help make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next question is actually a pretty relevant one. Why did you choose to invite Navi and DK? Being a North American association, did you consider giving more spots to the NA, NA scene like TL, EG, EHUG, and even C9 to an extent? Well, I mean, for us, basically, we look at recent results. And over the past, when I say recent, I mean like over the past five, six months. Yeah. Navi won Star Ladder Season 7, Star Ladder Season 8. Uh, they also won the Dream League as well, the most recent season. They have been, since TI3, consistently the, the best team on land. Yeah. And obviously, with their history at, at TI, second place, well deserving of an invite. We did invite Alliance. Yes. They actually declined. Uh, they were we were originally going to have three yeah. invites, uh, and then DK was our other invite. Won WPCA's, won G League. These teams have been winning the big LAN events over, for the most part right. in their respective regions. So yeah. that's why they got the invites. When Alliance declined, we thought about doing a third, but when we look around the scene, we see a lot of really strong teams right now. Like for example, Empire is playing out of their minds, but they haven't. They haven't done it on major lands, and there okay. wasn't really another strong candidate where we felt like that's a clear choice. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, that, that, like LD said, we're, we're I like how you say gotcha. Like I wasn't really <laughs> like wasn't hearing this for chat. the first. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> call Sing Sing. Uh, uh, yeah. Call Sing Sing. What, what's what's? Why do we need to call Sing Sing? Yeah, I, I missed this. Too long, didn't yeah. read. Jesus. I don't even know if we have, do we have him on Skype. Does someone have him on Skype? No, I don't know. We'll let's see what <laughs> what his his thoughts are about coming to potentially a lantern in LA, but. Uh, um, next question also about the Cloud9 European or American thing. We've already gone over that. Will Cloud9 be invited? There's no more invited teams, as LD said. That was really the hard thing. We had the three invites. Alliance uh, declined to participate because of the busy European land schedule, and then there was no real clear third team to invite. Cloud9 were probably the closest thing because of their MLG victory, but it still wasn't really a clear enough invite for us, I guess. Yeah, they've been performing well, but remember, they also won that land with Arteezy. Yeah, uh, and they and they stuff. finished second place at the Monster Invitational. Yeah. But by that point, we had already kind of made our plans for the event. So. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, next question: Where will the teams be staying if not the BTS studio? Uh, we don't have room to house 30, be 40 players. So. The, the, the Harry Potter closet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoever, not, not the Harry Potter closet. Yeah. Whoever like is has the worst record of the day has to gets the, the closet the night in the, the, the closet. closet. <laughs> that's just, it seems uh, okay. That's it's not that I still bad. don't know why we're supposed to call Sing Sing, but... Uh, it's just a... Can someone know. explain, please? I think it's just a meme thing. Please? I think it was a Dream League thing. Okay. Just, I don't know. I mean... I think yeah, the Dream Nine... League, like, owes Sing Sing a call, I believe. Yeah, so okay. Uh, I don't gotcha. know. Uh, next question. Are there ticket seats available for the tournament? Um, this is, it seems to be a bit of a recurring question. Um, as far as tickets go, there's no public tickets. We're kind of trying to do something more intimate, more focused on the players. We also have space constraints being uh, being hosted at our studio, but mm -hmm. we are aware that people want to feel like they're more part of an event, though. Yes. And while we can't tell you exactly what we plan because it's not confirmed, uh, we'll have something okay. most likely. So more more coming soon. Sorry to tease, but we just don't have anything firmed up yet. Announcements on announcements um, on announcements. Oh, Maybe yeah. you should uh, turn off your Skype. My Skype's beeping away. Oh my god, it's muted. 
Just fucking mute it. Come yeah. on. I'm, I'm more a fan of the do not disturb. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Skype skills over um, here. God, Intense so easy get, get your get your act together. Yeah, um, you, I know you're you're micromanaging here. Yeah. I'm 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 a little. You're just watching. Salty. Me. Well, do you want to micromanage? No, I'm, I'm already pressure. micromanaging. And here okay. you guys are getting some insight into the daily workings of Beyond the Summit. <laughs> Me bitching constantly, everyone else like, dude, chill. <laughs> um, next question, this is uh, probably a name that's going to be brought up a little bit in some of the news posters. Are we going full home story mode and supplying beer? And you can see the next question. Um, it's in our studio, home story, seat story style. So it is somewhat, I guess... De definitely we've been influenced by what Take TV has done yeah. in the past. We loved what he did for StarCraft II. Uh, we're not exactly trying to copy this event, but we're going to take uh, hopefully a lot of the positive aspects of it. And obviously, we're doing a Dota 2 tournament. It's a 5v5 team environment. Uh, we've got a different house. He's in Germany. We're in the U.S. Some things will be different, but uh, we've definitely been influenced. We love what he's done for StarCraft 2, and uh, hopefully we'll take the best parts of what he's done uh, and bring it to L.A. Okay. Um, I'm going to bypass that question. <laughs> <laughs> that video only made me look like a Peter. That's not a question, Peter. Yeah, though. that's such a... Okay, why are, why are you the, reading these? Having the event around Doom <laughs> when most of the competitions are about to end and preparations for TI4 are happening, how sure are you that the big teams are going to take things seriously when most teams plan on dropping events, i.e. MLG? I, I can only speculate, but I think one of the unfortunate things for MLG is it's not just that there were a lot of events in June, but it's positioning between DreamHack and ESL, right? Yeah. So some teams would have to travel... Uh, to DreamHack, then in, in Europe, then back to America, then back to Europe for ESL, and then back again. Uh, and of course, you might have that back and forth this way, but there's that extra week to kind of recover. Uh, might have been a factor for the teams. I, I don't know yeah. what their decision making was, but right. again, you know, teams choosing the players to play. Players excited. Like they, from speak from all the, the teams we talked to, it sounded like a lot of the players wanted to be. We're looking forward to coming out. And yeah, they, yeah. they want to get hot chocolate lessons, man. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily enough for us, it's kind of early too. It's not like right there at the internationals. So yeah. they come. And and ours is actually the, like the yeah the life. start of kind of the land season, so right. to speak. Like there's the start of the land, but that's well before. June. It also shouldn't yeah. be a stressful. And then there's, there's WPC, but that's only going to be four teams. And I guess just, uh, I don't mean to digress too much, but just on the topic of, well, I already hijacked one interview. Let me just hijack Go for it, LD. Um, just on the topic of yes. June being really busy, something that I've been thinking about a lot is it is really busy, but not every team's going to every event. Like, right. we're, we're yeah. only going to have six teams at our event. Dream League's going to have six. I believe ESL has eight, and MLG would got, ended up getting canceled. So, okay. uh, you know, maybe a few of these teams go to two or three of these events, but... Not every you, team goes to Not every, every team goes to every event, so the, yeah. it's busy for the viewers, but how hard is it to watch games from home for the most okay. part? So. All right, yeah. well, we've got pro probably lots more questions if we're going to be doing all of these. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know we'll have time to get through all of these. The thread is quickly well, blowing up The ones here, we don't but... actually, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, only loaded the first 70 or so, and a lot of those yeah. are applied. Jesus. We, we should, we, we should reward the, the people 70. that did the thread like way back, like two weeks ago, answer some of those oh, That's going to come at the end of the show. We're gonna, the that's end a, of the show. That's separate to the oh, summit. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we will have like more of a general BTS Q&A. Okay. Uh, those who are flaming our lighting. Yeah, and this is the. Okay. We're working on it. But. We'll do a Q and A about the summit. I think this is a good question, else. though. Um, will there be any special guest casters, or will it just be the guys from BTS? We'll all be here, but the whole point of the event is we want to make the players a bigger part of it. Whether that's yeah. casting, whether that's just hanging out, barbecuing, playing poker. Yeah. Not for money, of course, because I think that would get us in trouble with Twitch. But uh, <laughs> just you know, more fun activities. Have the players more a part of the show and not just you know the people in the booths on stage. Gotcha. So um, they will be casting. Yeah. Uh, a recurring question from a few people is just about the Asian qualifier and will there be any Southeast Asian teams taking part? Because I know Starlighter, this season don't have a Southeast Asia portion. Next season they plan to have one. Valat said they will. Uh, Valat said they will. Um, we're planning on including Southeast Asian teams, but they're going to be a part of the overall Asia qualifier, which will also include the Chinese teams. It'll all be played online and we'll have like a separate Southeast Asia Korea portion and th then they join up. The winner of that joins up with the Chinese one. So. We do, we do plan on including the Southeast Asian teams, but it's going to be one spot for all of Southeast Asia and China. I thought it was two for Southeast Asia. Oh, Southeast you mean Asia one team that comes to the land? Yeah, yeah, yeah. one right. team that comes to the land from all of Asia, which includes Southeast Asia and China. Right. Regarding the qualifiers, we haven't finalized completely the format. Yeah, we have a pretty good idea of what we're going to do, uh, but we'll have more information in a future announcement. Yeah. I see a few questions about the qualifier stage and the format, so that's that information coming soon. <laughs> what are you I, laughing at? You can sa sadly, I too. I do comb my hair and I showered before the show and yes, the shirt's clean and I don't know, man. <laughs> this I'm not the most photogenic guy at BTS. What can I say? Uh, okay. What can you say? <laughs> Jesus, life's fucking hard, man. <laughs> okay. Um, more questions about Cloud Nine. Um, 
popular team. Let's hope they qualify. Yeah, right. What type of things can fans expect when you talk about this more intimate environment? Will there be more off-game footage during the tournament? Yes. Well, that's the yeah, I guess Are you going to answer yes. any questions? Like, I don't know. I, I'm like, reading them. What? I can answer questions. I know okay. what's going on. Yeah, let's get the guys What's going on, Brian? We are, we're going to have try to make it a very intimate environment. Like we talked about, we've been using that word a lot. We're going to be trying to do a lot of like in-between games, trying to like show, you know, uh, players interacting with each other. We'll have fun little activities. Like there'll be a lot of out-of-game footage. Like we'll sure like have some clowny competitions at some point. But it's completely out of game. Like well, one v one tournament. Not totally out of the question yet. Yeah, we'll, we'll do some stuff. You hot never know. Hot tub interviews. Hot tub. Hot Merlini hot tub. Interviews. Merlini from the top. Ooh. We got a lot of. We have. need to get a hot tub, don't we? Oh, like, oh, you mean Merlini's bathroom? It's a soaker tub. We got to well, see that was, Does it have the little jets that you can turn on? I don't think it does. Oh man. But still. That was part of the deal, though, right? Because when we moved into the house, you were back in Australia. We were still talking to these guys, yeah. and so Ben and I move in, and he's like, "Hey, can I have the master bedroom?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, hmm. hmm, how much can I get out of Ben in exchange for giving him the master bedroom?" <laughs> so, so part of the him. agreement is that his bathroom is just. It's like open season. If anyone wants to go in there, like oh, take really? a jacuzzi, okay. you don't even have to knock. You just nice. you know, Sweet. strut on in. So I can just strut on in. Don't like, okay, Ben, taking a shower. Walking to Ben's room. I mean, his bathroom is like the size of my bedroom. So yeah. I mean, it's, it's, how does that it's make fair. you feel? Makes me feel okay. I was the last the one. Size of your value, bedroom. Value my bedroom is. I've got the smallest room in the house. At least you have the Harry Potter. Yeah, you know, okay, you've yeah, got some storage. I have a singleton closet. You have two, David and. David so both you have their own. Your last. Yeah, I know. So it's it's okay. I'm all right with. It. I'm just I'm just happy to be included, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, I think your room's bigger than mine, though. I have the Harry Potter room, actually, but like in terms of actual, like, I haven't measured it out. I don't know. Okay, but I'm okay. Okay. I, I, I did measure it out. You guys have exactly <laughs> identically sized rooms. Oh, I've really? Right. We're gonna pull out the rule. Oh, but you you have the porch. I have the balcony. Yeah, and he's got the he's balcony. Got, no, he's but the a... pigeons shit all over it. I can't use it. <laughs> I have a covey of pigeons that live on my balcony and just. Brian, like when he moved in, right, the house was clean. He had like this beautiful, gorgeous porch. Like you can see the mountains that we're not too far away from. It's beautiful. Yeah. You know, your your fiance helped you select the room, and yeah. and she's like, Brian, this is perfect. What a view. Right. And he he was there for like I don't even know how long. Like, <laughs> what was it? Like a few weeks, and all of a sudden, like, I'm like Brian, why is your door always closed? It's so nice outside. You're like. Just shit all over it's, my. It smells like porch. shit, man. It's unfortunately, been a theme of shit on this show today, and it's... yeah, between that and then the cat litter boxes, it's just yeah. been a, it's Ooh. been a shit fest. And Cinder and talking about, oh right, game rituals, oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. poof all over the place. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Jesus Christ! What can you do? Next TV, question. Next question. Will be impressed. <laughs> Next question. Why two Sponsors America love qualifiers? So is this because it would be cheaper to cover costs for the teams because of the target audience? Is American or other reasons? Well, we already we're inviting one team from Europe, one team yeah. from China, and we're based in North America. We really want to support the scene, and you know, let's make sense. Have two teams from each region. So yeah. right. that was pretty. That was pretty much the thinking. Yeah. Right. Uh, com yeah. Combination of factors are a bit of a, well, probably all those things really. So, um, next question. Um, I don't know. What are these kind of repeat questions? Get original. I don't know. Come on, guys. Are we going to see the Enchantress cosplay, or are we going to be disappointed? That's a good question. I'd forever disappoint people. Forever. No. <laughs> I don't think he should get to wait until June for that. No. <laughs> we'll see what can come before then. I <laughs> I might have to make him do the cosplay. Like, Crack that whip. <laughs> just like <laughs> sneak up on gods and like strap the the wig on and just go. like prod him out. Yeah, yeah. On camera. It worked for, it worked for Valve it. and Fear. They just kind of yeah. took him back to the hotel into the van. Like, get in the Jesus, van, dude. come back to the hotel. The chat was uh, the van. Not liking that. <laughs> oh, they were God. worried for Fear's safety and well-being. Yeah. I okay. have a question that someone asked you, unrelated to the, well, related to the event because he's going to be coming. Mm -hmm. First, some people are asking if he's going to raid our liquid covenants, but this is more relevant. Is Havost still a four? Well, I know, I know, I want to know the stats, man. Let's see what okay, Brian. Let's has to start say. with Brian. Oh, start with me. Yeah. Why are you going to throw this on me? You're the well, you want to be a big I'm shot the numbers here. guy, but those were like the whole point of those were to be kind of like just random ratings. I wasn't a part of. Okay, okay. okay. At okay, at the time, Havost was playing like a four. Okay, he really was. At the time of the Alien World Cup, oh he was not playing. Like, now we go. he's still a four. Now, so I'm, no, I'm now, now, now four is a good thing now. Like now, the guy for this, no, to be now, a four. now, now, in like terms of like carry quality, he's up there. He's like he's like eight or nine. He's but in terms of like his his, his personality is in our hearts, I, he's still a four. I, I also have something to say to the, to, to the people out there, and specifically to Mister uh, One David Luminous Zhang. <laughs> You car your word carries no power here, my friend. You tried to upgrade him to a five. <laughs> BTS made him a four, and BTS will decide <laughs> if and when he can become a five. Four forever. 
down. Four for life. <laughs> Four boys. Okay. Uh, do we have any other? I don't think but, we have... but I mean, Havost has actually played like a monster. No, he's been extremely ever, good. ever since. Yeah. The worst part was like he just started shaping his game up right as that event happened. So. Well, the best part, I guess, in some ways. Right. Yeah. I think that pretty yeah. much sums up. I mean, most of the questions we'll probably go through the post a bit later and maybe answer a few more. But mm -hmm. yeah, and we'll we'll skim through the post and yeah. you know reply manually, not it's live too on many air to reply to. Yeah, but we do appreciate all of your questions, guys. We're glad you're very excited about the summit. As are we. It's kind of uh, one of one of several big projects we have coming up this year. So very exciting, very exciting. I got one indeed. more question. He PM'd it to me on Skype. PPD uh, from EG said. He's obviously biased, but if the only prerequis prerequisite for entering the NA qualifier is playing on USC's, expect problems. Um, it, I don't think it's going to be the only prerequisite. Um, we haven't really finalized all the details for the qualifiers, but mm. we think everyone's going to be happy. We, we don't expect teams to uh, worry too much about about how things are going to be. We're going to be looking to be as fair as possible. Just we don't have we don't have rules set in stone for it just yet. We'll figure it out. So yeah. figure it out. We'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yes. Have faith. Relax. Exactly. Relax. It's going to be a fun event. <coughs> Relax. Yeah. You're doing fine. So, um, again, thank you for your questions, guys. I think that wraps up our talk about the summit for now. We'll go ahead and take a couple of questions from the from the community thread that actually was the first thread on our BTS subreddit. If you haven't found it by now, it is reddit.com slash r slash beyond the summit. And we'll take a couple of questions and uh, we'll wrap up. And then last but not least, we're overdue for a song, fellas. That's after a break. Oh, oh I know. We're, 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 it's coming I'm up later. Just go like down the whiskey real quick. Yeah. I, we'll, we'll Bring out the, the Jameson and I. I well, you'll see how well I can sing. That's I, all. I'm say. looking forward to it. This is uh, going to be news to us as well. So, all right. So, uh, one question that I really enjoyed. This is from Penzone on the subreddit. Do you have any plans after you've retired from the Dota 2 casting scene? If so, what are they? So we can kind of just do a slow around. Anybody have a a thought provoking answer to that one? Sorry, what was it? Sorry. You weren't even listening to me, no. LD. Look, you were making eye contact, but you were in another Dude, these world. These lights are like blinding. <laughs> You're used to the hot lights, man. You're in Hollywood. These now. bright lights, I, I can't hear anymore. I, I can't. Do you, <laughs> you have any plans? You get like those spots, you know, when you look at the sun and you're just like, you're just blind. And then you just go oh, deaf God. right after the blindness. <laughs> Jesus. Do you have any plans after you've retired from Dota 2 casting? If so, what are they? LD, this one's for you. Uh, I don't see myself casting forever, I guess. I, I honestly kind of stumbled into it to begin with. Like, I, I really enjoyed TI1. I loved what Toby was doing at the time. I was like, hey, you know, I'd like to cast. I've played Dota for a while, see what I can do. And, you know, I, I don't, I never expected to be a caster. I never expected to cast TI. I've been pretty blessed and long term, we'll see. But uh, after I retire, who knows? I, have, I don't have a good answer ready. Other David? Any well, thoughts? Well, he's got the Lambo, so... Were you what not listening either? Uh, what was what the are you going to do after you retire from casting? Jesus. Um, I'm, I'm not a... I want someone who looks towards the future, as anyone in my family will quickly <laughs> tell you. I think, like, maybe two weeks in, in advance. And okay. That's a... I, not yeah, the answer was, I was expecting. I was, was, so when I was talking to him, I'm like, okay, when are you coming back to L.A., David? When are you coming back? And he's like, oh, sometime around this, you know, three, four week, five I'm week I'm realistic, period. like, realistic about the fact that Dota 2 has a lifespan, be it five years, ten years, even 15 years maybe, but at the same time, I don't really think, like, this is what I want to do. I mean, there's the stuff I want to do, but I, there's no, like, oh, this is what I will do. I'm, yeah. I feel, I, Dota, so I feel like, similarly kind of to like what LD said. I got into casting totally on a whim. I wanted to start hosting StarCraft tournaments, and I asked my team, anybody want to cast? And unanimously they all said, no, I'm not doing that. Are you crazy? And I was like, oh, how hard can it be? And then I kind of just fell in love with it and hard. worked my way up. And <laughs> I feel the same way. I, I feel lucky to be here. And I, I recognize the, uh, the volatility of our industry. And I'm, right. I'm along for the ride and happy to be here as long as you all have me. So. Yeah. How about you, Stats, man? What are you thinking? That was an ominous end. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, so that, volatile. Was, was, we this, never know what's going on. This is where the demon edge comes could, out and you just get executed. It could end. No, it, we're here forever. We could end at any moment. Yeah. <laughs> any moment. No. Jesus um, Christ. I've, like, it, was, it was crazy. Like, as, as a child, I always wanted to do something involved in like sports management. I was the kid that was playing the baseball simulation games where it's just nothing but numbers. Like You don't actually swing a bat. This it's guy. literally just stats and you're like making trades and stuff. Okay. So if the time for me in front of the camera or, do, or in the broadcast is done, I think I think I would like to like make a transition and do like managerial stuff. I would enjoy like doing like scouting, like helping out teams like figure out like strategies that the other teams are running against them. Mm -hmm. So you want to go like full Moneyball with with Dota two, basically? Actually, yeah. I I don't want to sound like a hipster or anything, but Moneyball was like one of my favorite books like ten years ago. Like back when that actually whole, like, sounds pretty out. fucking awesome. I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> 
Honestly, yeah. I've already I been doing Char it a little bit. I think Charlie's got a bit of a leg. I've already been doing it a little bit, but not. Yeah, Charlie's right. killing it. So, so all right. Um, we're running low on time here, guys, but another good question. This one's from Alex Goro. What do your families think about what you do? Do they know the game? LD, you can take point again. Um, they were very skeptical when I started because I had been working, like, I had a full-time job as an IT business consultant and... Then I ended up quitting, and I was working kind of as a contractor, so I'd like do it for like eight hours, ten hours a day, and then cast in my free time. And right. I, you know, it was just a hobby at the time. I wasn't well known, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to Seattle. I'm probably going to be on a stream with hundreds of thousands of people watching. This was back in 2012, mm -hmm. and you know, they were like, uh, okay, sounds cool. That's cool. You know, they, they helped me like go shopping, get some nice, <laughs> nice duds together, and there you go. Um, nice shoes. I don't think they thought it was going to evolve into anything, but. They're supportive. I mean, my parents basically, it's like, don't do drugs, don't booze, don't end up in a ditch, don't get in a car accident, don't hurt yourself. Like, they're worriers, right? My folks yeah. are like, you know, they just don't want me to get hurt as long as I'm okay and I'm not they were starving. Really, That's the main thing. They were super supportive of that NPR article. One of you well, yeah, that I, NPR. I did the NPR senior, interview that and then all of a sudden, they're like, oh, now it's Oh, legit. now you're legitimate. <laughs> my parents don't even know what NPR is. My, actually, it's really funny. Sorry to put my mom on blast, but... Uh, geez, that's that's a really bad We're way gonna, to start a call. Oh my god! Oh man, someone's gonna like find uh, the show devolves like call so my quickly. mom and let her know what I said. But like, okay, so, so she well. made a Facebook post, right? And my mom doesn't use Facebook very often. And she said, "My son David did this interview with NPR. Like, please, you know, listen to it. He's got an opportunity to get involved working as the official esports commentator for NPR." <laughs> and I'm like, uh, uh, "That's news to me. Uh, <laughs> sounds good." I didn't know M NPR was in the business of hiring full-time esports commentators. Yeah, so I think she's a little mis soon. Mis a little soon. Soon. Mis soon. misguided soon. about the purpose she's of the She's got interview. the inside scoop. But hey, NPR. maybe someday, man. You never know. Yeah. Other David, what do you think? What's your family think about uh, your endeavors here in LA? My, my sister was just messaging me like 15 minutes ago. She's like, was all excited. She was like, oh, she actually, I'll read what she said now, but she was all excited and happy to see like the new studio and stuff. And I think she said, oh, I'm just going to message you on, on, on my phone because she was a bit scared of the Twitch chat experience. Oh. oh my. Well, she so. knows what the Twitch chat experience is. So. Yeah. Well, now, a, you, now a, you put her at their mercy. Like, uh, that's, that's, what the hell, exactly. David? You've yeah. go full, you go full Twitch chat. But my, <laughs> <laughs> Punch him. Um, my, my parents actually, like, I mean, they always kind of knew I cast a bit as a hobby. I mean, they knew I played video games. They found mm. out I was, like, kind of serious about it. One back in 2011, I think it was. I went to Thailand for a Dota 1 tournament called ESTC, and I didn't actually tell them because I knew they wouldn't be happy. But they Ooh. somehow found out through Facebook or something, and this is while there's some really bad floods there. So they were kind of like freaking out, like, oh, wow. he's in this random country, no one really knows he's there. <laughs> and I was just casting a Dota tournament. And they, after that, like, we had more communication. Like, to this day, my mum was at TI2. Both my parents came to TI3. Wow. Um, they didn't watch nice. the whole tournament, but they just showed up for like one or two days. Um, my dad is actually a Mushi fan after watching... He watched one uh, game. Your dad's got good taste. He yeah. it was an like orange say, game. Awesome. I think you were casting it, so you obviously hyped about I something. I fanboyed the shit out of Mushi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sorry, sorry to those who weren't rooting well, for orange. Yeah, and he, he's well, an exciting player. He's though. the he's the playmaker yeah. for the team. So obviously, a lot of the commentary revolves around him at times. And my dad was like, "That Mushi guy seems really good. Like, I like this team. Like, now he's orange is his favorite team, and Mushi's his favorite player. Well, awesome. he's got to be so, a little sad about orange now, I guess. Yeah. Is he more of a? D is he like? A DK fan now? I think he told him about Mushi leaving. So. Yeah. You might break your dad's heart. Best, best to mums, mums the word yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 So. My um. parents are all about money. Their whole thing was like, it sounds like a lot of fun, but if you're not making any money, I don't know what you're going to do once you're done college. And then I think they didn't believe that I could actually get a job when I was like, yeah, I'm going to go out to L.A. And they're like, yeah, yeah. sure. Go to okay. L.A. Be an like, what are you going to do, drive out there? Actually, good luck being a, <laughs> yes, a barista. There are roads that connect the east coast of the United <laughs> States to the west coast of the United States. It's one of those. Interestingly enough. I'll believe it when I see it kind of a deal. Yeah. So now they're very supportive, but... Before, when I was like Dota Radio, which was not a very profitable project, although it was very worthwhile, they, they weren't particularly supportive. So um, yeah. it, it's been 50 50, but uh, they're happy for me now that I'm out here. Yeah. No comment. Okay. <laughs> I think <laughs> my so, parents barely even know the internet exists. So. Yeah, well, well, we have some interesting stories about your folks. Maybe that's, not that's maybe not for today. But yeah, maybe. Uh, Bri yeah. Brian's story maybe. time could fill like a 30-hour episode. Probably. I could do a day-night. I could do like five day-night daily 100s. 
<laughs> you, let's just, say, actually, really, home let's just say I grew up in a town they of might 450 not, people. They might not be quite not, as up, in Alabama. In Alabama. It might not be quite as uplifting. Mm. Yeah. Let's end on a positive note, guys. Heal it's and okay. ship up. It's okay. It's fine. It's okay. good. It's good. Okay. Not good, but that's not an accurate <laughs> word for it, but it's okay. Okay. We got more questions? Uh, let's see here. Okay, one more light question to kind of wrap things up. Uh, cashing in is the guy that posted oh. this one, or or young lady. It's not a very gender specific name. How often do casters read read Twitch chat during games? Huh. This is a little yeah, bit of a guilty often. pleasure <laughs> it, for some of us. It kind of depends. Like I know David and I like we're guilty of sometimes reading the chat too much. Like when we know we probably should just be focusing on the cast. If Eldie's doing camera work, me, it's like 50% game, 50% Twitch chat. It was really bad last year. Like, you've been better at the Kurt studio, but at the old house, like, that. he'd like, he'd never fucking listen to me. I'm he'd, be, he'd be like, uh-huh, and then go and repeat exactly what I said. But when I was casting with Andrew, because I almost always do camera, I did the same thing. That's like, man, it's like so easy to just get spoiled yeah. and, and just start. It's like you say something and LD starts repeating, I look over and he's like, I just tabbed out like, oh. Okay, there was actually one moment, I, it was like, uh, God, it was a week or two ago. And I actually, while I was controlling the camera and casting, started like talking shit to someone who was annoying me in chat. I was like, actually, you're wrong. You're a fucking idiot. And here's why. Like, then I just, you know, in a, in a more charming and diplomatic sure, tone. Yeah, exactly. And then I almost missed a kill. So that's why I was like, okay, Jimmy's got the, his addiction that he's working on, and I think I've, got a, I've, I've, I've got a problem too, guys. I'm, wor I'm working on it, though. First step is admitting it. Well, when, you, when you're at an event like MLG or, you know, yeah. uh, MLG or the International or any LAN event, like, I don't yeah. read, you don't read chat at all. No. Yeah. Like, you, you actually can't usually because of how they capture your screen, but... Even if you could, it's not doing justice to the event. Right. Yeah. When it, I, yeah, serious line events, you just don't worry about yeah. that. Yeah. So. And when you're the producer, in our, at least in our upstairs studio, you have that luxury of having three monitors, so you can leave Twitch chat open and kind of just, you know, skim back and forth. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say I really read it, but I like to keep tabs on it and just look at like, are people are spamming audio too loud, audio too high. <laughs> Call Twitch chat. <laughs> Call Twitch. You should have Twitch, Twitch plays calling BTS. Yeah. Twitch plays BTS. That would be amazing. Uh, Everyone enters a word, and we it would, somehow answer their yeah. question. It would just be time. like that NASA. Uh, MMO oh game, the Moon Base Alpha. Have you seen the video for that? No. Where it's got a text to speak thing and it's just okay. ridiculous. Well, that sounds awesome. Just people saying John Madden over and over. Oh, again. Good. it's good. It's good. Well, fellas, I think that pretty much brings us to the end. Um, is there, woo! Woo! What yeah. a show. Three hours later, guys, we made it. Thank you for. Has it really? Been? Oh my what's, god. What stamina? Dave, what, what, what stamina, stamina? the studio has? <laughs> I mean, it was one show. Yeah. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. One show. Sure. It's actually, it's actually funny. I'm always the naysayer too. Like, we'll like do something good. And I'm like, eh, it's okay. We can do better next I time. I don't hate Bri it. Bri <laughs> I don't hate it. <laughs> and actually, that is a good, good topic. Uh, right. There's a lot of people who help make the new studio possible. I know some of you have had feedback on like the lighting, the backdrop. We know they're not perfect. It's a work in progress. But, uh, and we obviously, you know, we're working with what we can. But I think yeah. we're all really proud of the improvement we've made from the old place. Like the old place we had. What was it like a fifty dollar IKEA table? I, I think I'm a very too much justice there. I was I'm, like twenty dollars maybe. Right, I'm maybe. a very enthusiastic guy, right? And yeah. so like sometimes when we're on camera, I just like smash the table, and like the table would shake, and, and whoever I'm casting with would just freak out. Right. Like yeah. earthquake. Okay. <laughs> please don't break it. Like you'd like even see it like bow a little bit. <laughs> so uh, we had the laundry room right next door. Yep. You know, I remember casting with Lumi so many times. It'd just be like. Yeah, the BTS laundry room's really going hard right now. <laughs> Sorry. And when the, well, we couldn't run the I got to a point where we couldn't run the laundry while we were casting because we'd have power problems. Then. Yeah. So everyone was under strict no laundry while BTS is casting. <laughs> the only studio house that has a no laundry policy. Yeah. <laughs> I will oh, say. God. I will say that Please. the lighting for the upstairs studio is coming from the bathroom on the second floor. So yeah. Mine and Andrew's. We're, we're still in a house, you know. You gotta make yeah. sacrifices. Yeah. Had some power issues, but yeah. we made it work. You know, we ran some cables and. Yeah. You don't fucking say that because the second that you say that, like the whole show is just gonna blow up. But we're good for today. Yeah. yeah this we, is um, we'll but yeah, we've well. come a long way, and there's a lot of people who help make that possible. I think the first people to thank are the people who originally supported our Indiegogo project. There were close to a thousand of them, and. Yes. We've been a bit delinquent in fulfilling some of the rewards, but as mentioned, we're going to get to pretty much the last ones we have to do at this point. Uh, I know there was a Reddit thread a few weeks ago, maybe, well, actually a few months ago at this point, kind of asking for like an update, what's been going on. To be honest, what really happened was we just got super busy casting events, and that's not an excuse or justification, but it just kind of fell by the wayside. We were casting yeah. like eight, ten hours a day both, trying to work on our plans for the future. Um, and ultimately, we do still realize that 
everyone deserves those rewards, and um, we're going to fulfill them. Yeah. So we've well, gotten latest, through most of them at this point. Latest update, just to be totally transparent, is there's probably maybe about 10 to 20 people who we still need to play a game with, which is one of the rewards you get to play a game with us. Um, and, and, and before we go into all the lists, I do want to mention like a lot of people who actually contributed declined the reward or just never yeah. replied. And a lot of them who declined it just said, we're just happy you got to build the studio, man, and you get yeah. to cast more, and hopefully with better production value. Yeah, there's still a few more lessons to do, and then, of course, we've got the Song of the Sirens, which will be yeah. coming, starting at the end, well, we'll do one at the end of this show. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much it. Outside of that, all other rewards should have been completed, and if you selected a reward and yours was not completed, you should email either myself or God's, uh, David G at beyondthesummit.tv or David P at beyondthesummit.tv. Yeah. I'm going to get some things I don't want in my email, but them's the breaks. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't been taken care of yet, just email us, let us know, and we do apologize if that's happened, but at this point we've reached out to everyone, and yeah. most people have either been fulfilled or said they didn't care. Yeah. Uh, and aside from the Kickstarter awards, we have to thank everyone who actually helped make this studio now possible. Uh, yes. There's a lot of people who, um, it's not just us here, I mean, we have uh, Brian and, as well as Andrew who've joined us full time, but uh, a guy called Max who lives in LA who's pretty much built this desk from scratch, well, at least a lot of the desk from scratch, helped mm -hmm. us pretty much. And his boss helped studio. him a bit as well. Okay. But awesome. you know more about that. I was just off in Australia on, on the like gallivanting with, gallivan with the kangaroos. Hunt yeah. Hunting drop bears. Yeah, something. It's whatever yeah. people do. The usual. <laughs> Having fun on potato internet. I mean, the, the yeah. goal is with the new studio, like, it's, it's a work in progress. So yeah. whether it's new video content, improving the lighting, having, you know, changing the setup a bit, like, we're not just going to sit with it and never evolve. We had a right. long downtime, and we were somewhat kind of limited by the space that we had at the old place. And while, you know, we don't have a warehouse, we've got a lot more room to work with yeah, now. Exactly. So. Um, but yeah, thank you, Max. And I think the other few big people who really deserve shout-outs are Sergio, who's been working very hard on our graphics production package, Sam, uh, or Way2Death, who actually designed the entire overlay package. He's also yeah. designing a lot of those stats features, oh, yeah. working closely with... Uh, I don't, do they want to be named? The guys? I actually don't know. We're going to have to ask them. We'll ask sure. them if they want credit. We don't want to put them on the spot if they don't, but we've got two guys who are... Making the life stats possible, and yeah. I think the last... Is there anyone else major? He's sitting at the production desk. Oh, yeah, of course. That <laughs> goes without saying. Well, we're going to have, like, a meet the meet the Roland. Meet segment. the Roland? Okay, all right, so we'll tease it a little bit here. We've wait, got wait our... to the camera, Roland. Right. <laughs> He's, Roland's a bit short. So he He's too short. <laughs> Uh, We've got Roland, who's come all the way out from, uh, well, Malaysia. Oh, well, I yeah. guess he was in the UK studying there, but he's uh, come from Malaysia, and he's helping us out here at the studio, and uh, been a, a great asset to us here. Yeah, and of course, everyone who works with us remotely, whether it's like yeah. Sander, Winter, uh, Base Kit, Mott, yeah. and what is Hip's been doing some yeah. casting. What is Hip and Coddle Coddle Guy. Coddle yeah. Guy. Yeah. Coddle, you were, yeah, you remembered him now. You were flaming him earlier. I fucking love that guy, man. No, you're just mad because he makes you look bad. He actually has <laughs> done his cosplay, and he didn't even have to lose a bet. All right. Well, on that note, you, you, you do the rest. Thanks, everybody, for, for joining <laughs> us. Help. And I hope you enjoyed the first show. Yeah. If you have any feedback, uh, I'd hopefully constructive, but hey, if you just want to call me ugly, go for it. If you guys want to flame on the subreddit, yeah. I mean, honestly, that's sort of what it's there for. It's so. just whatever you want. You know, you know, send me penis messages like Charlie. It's, it's all good. But reddit.com slash r slash beyond the summit. What? what? No, nothing. You're just asking for it. It's your your anti-penis message? Is that I that? don't want penis messages. Okay, well, it's there you go, guys. Oh, don't I didn't, send I didn't them to this guy. Email out, so. That's a good point. Um, you can post on our subreddit. You can also just tweet at us, post on our Facebook. If you don't know the social media, facebook.com slash beyondthesummittv, twitter.com slash beyondthesummit, and what else do we have? Um, do we have other social media? youtube.com slash beyondthesummittv. Check out our it. MySpace. Yeah, well, we have more oh, shows coming. We have a Tumblr. We do have a Tumblr. Yeah. We have a Tumblr? Which we yeah. didn't even know about. I didn't know we had a Tumblr the first four months we had a Tumblr. Actually, no, I think LD, so who, I, I knew, but LD didn't know. So who was in control of said Tumblr? Oh, that's George, actually. George and Willie. Who the uh, hell is George? George and Willie. <laughs> We've got a George. Everyone has a George. The BTS have a George? family. <laughs> we have this George web. actually helped us film and some video We've content. We've got some distant relatives. I'm not privy to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Haven't met the extended family yet. Yeah, I mean, if we wanted to thank everyone who's helped make the, oh, the whole studio Jeez. and everything the that we mods, do possible. The everything, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, we'd probably never end well, the but, show, yeah. but they all deserve a lot of thanks, and we it's not a four, ten-person show. It's a lot more than that. So. Yeah. We've always been, you know, just built up and supported by the community. Hopefully, you guys will continue to support us, and if you have any feedback on the show, if there are other show ideas you'd like to see, just anything beyond the summit that you want to let us know about, just shoot us a message and... You know, we're a work in progress. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our, our revamp look. We're not done yet. Brian's got some new makeup tricks he wants to try oh, next yeah. time, I'm sure. <laughs> well, on that note, I think that's going to do it. So, guys, yeah. from all of us here in Los Angeles at the Beyond the Summit studio, 
we're signing off for our first episode. See you soon. Yeah, it's all about trying to shut down that Lycan, and because he is, uh, well, the definition of a melee hero, that Ion Shell will come in handy to try and zone out <laughs> TC a little bit. A he is the definition of a melee hero, man. He's got claws. Uh, yeah, that was a silly thing to say. That was just one of those, like, I opened my mouth, some bullshit came out, and I just tried to go with it. All right, my bad. It was really funny. Last game of the day, uh, you, you try to get a little creative, and sometimes, sometimes it's a swing and a miss. In the know? mid lane, Bulba actually up on CS versus... Man. We're fucking filming it! This is fucking serious, it's done it too! <laughs>